Hey everyone, how you doing? Okay, I'm not necessarily, well, I'm not necessarily doing my pickup video yet. Um, that's gonna be delayed for a little while. So chances are, it might be between, it might be my Christmas and my <laughs> birthday pickups, but the way it might be looking. But, we'll see. I do want to show you two of them, because I know that I haven't done many game show videos lately on here, and I do apologize for that. But, I do have two things that I did pick up for Christmas. Well, I actually have three, but one's a DVD set. Now, these are game show themed DVD, or C DVDs, CDs. This one is called The Best of TV, Quiz, and Game Show Themes. This one is called Classic TV Game Show Themes. By the way, if you notice the one constant, yes, this is the old, old school, one of the older school uh, game show network themes, or uh, logos rather. Now, I'm going to start with this one. The reason is, because some of the themes chronologically will make a little bit more sense. I'll explain in a minute. The first theme actually sets the table for this. The match game, a swinging safari. This is the theme. If you remember when I did the match game on my Game Show Memory Lane um, segments, I told you that the show started actually in the 1960s. This theme in particular, that's on this disc is from the 1960s version. This has the first version of the password theme. Now when I say the password, I mean the one with Alan Lutton, not the one from Password Plus or even the Super Password version. To tell the truth, beat the clock. This is not the one from the Monty Hall era. The price is right. Okay. Just so we can differentiate this now. Match game, password, to tell the truth, and beat the clock or four shows that will appear on the other disc. However, the theme that is on this one comes specifically from the Bill Cullen era. And I know I just heard somebody go, wait a minute, wait, 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 he never hosted that show. Look it up, kiddies, and do your history. Yeah, he did. He was a host long before Bob Barker, Tom Candy, Dennis James, or, ugh, Drew Carey. What's my line? There's another theme. Now, here's one for you that's going to really trip you up. The Hollywood Squares, Bob and Merrill's theme. Okay, let's stop for a sec. Bob and Merrill are Bob Quigley and Merrill Hatter. They created the Hollywood Squares. They've also created the shows Gambit and Catch-21. I know there's a show I skipped because it also appears on the same disc. I did so I did that for a reason. The Joker's Wild, The Savers. Okay. That was the first theme to Jack Barry's version of The Joker's Wild. However, something happened, and because of royalty reasons, uh, they couldn't use it anymore. So later on, as the series got older, they changed up the theme. Monopoly. Alright, nobody's going to remember that show. But when there was a brief time during the summer, when, it was in the 90s, I know that much. I just forget when. They did an hour where it was Super Jeopardy and Monopoly. Ironically, Monopoly was hosted by a guy that appeared on Jeopardy. 
Believe it or not. It was a horrible show, by the way. It was... Ugh. Let's make a deal. This is not the theme from the very popular 80s series. This is the one from the 60s and 70s version. Wheel of Fortune. Uh, big Wheels. This was the theme around the time when I want to say Chuck Woolery hosted it. And Chuck Woolery was a host and Susan Stafford was a letter turner. Okay. It is not the pet the one from Pat Sage after Bob Goins there. Tattletales. Alright. Now I listened to the theme. I think it's the one from when the show first started. And of course, by the way, it was supposed to be for comedy. But I think it's the one when the show first started. I'm not sure. I have to listen to, like all the themes from Tattletales to know for sure. Blockbusters. Okay. This is another one of those. There were two versions of this, of this show. This is the one from. God damn. This is. Wait, where are we? Yeah, blockers. This is the one from. Sorry. This is the one from the Bill Cullen era. I think Bob Hilton was the uh, MC, or not the MC, but the announcer, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong, somebody might be able to correct me. Break the Bank. Ah, yes. That glorious theme. Sorry. For those who don't know, there was about three versions of this show. There was a version from the 1940s, a version in 1960s, uh, 1970s, and a version in the 1980s. Now, the, two, the version that's on here is from the 1970s. It was the version, it was the theme. Bah, let me try this again. In English this time. It's the theme that would be heard on the Tom Kennedy, Jack Berry version. Except Kennedy's was daily, Jack Berry's was a weekly syndicated. By the way, really stupid fact, well, really stupid fact or interesting depending on what you're looking at. When Kennedy's version was cancelled, it was number three in the ratings. You know why they cancelled it? To expand General Hospital to 45 minutes at the time. The Gong Show. Go to hell, Jack Bears. I literally, or, I did again. When I, when I recorded this, this video the first time, I called him Jack Bears. Chuck Bears. And I literally said that when I passed forward, when I skipped this one. I said, go to hell, Chuck Bears. Uh, do, 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 the Diamond Head game. I've never actually seen an episode. I don't think there is an episode available to watch on YouTube. But it was hosted by Bob Eubanks. Well, he literally stated that show ruined his career and he did not host another game show for six years afterwards. I wish it ruined his career so I never had to see that arrogant little prick again. I hated his ass. The $10,000 Pyramid. This was the first incarnation of Pyramid. Just wondering, there was 10, 20, 25, 50, 100,000. Do you know who hosted the original version of the $25,000 pyramid? Bill Cohen. When he was hosting that version, the $50,000 pyramid was hosted by Clark. And then Clark, when they revived the $25,000 pyramid, took over as host. And he also hosted the $100,000 Pyramid. When he left to do the Challengers, a short-lived game show in 1991, 1999-1991, the show was revived, and John Davidson, who, by the way, incidentally, was a host of The Hollywood Squares, took over hosting News by the only list, I think, for like a year. Maybe it was long around. High Rollers. 
Okay. Do you notice how I didn't mention high rollers when I mentioned the Hollywood Squares Gambit and Catch-21? Is because that was the other Harry Quigley show that was on this disc. The catch is it's not the theme from the 1970s version. It's the one, in other words, the Alex Trebek version. It's the one from Wake Martindale's version. That song is called Bubblegum. The funny part about it is that theme was actually going to be used for a show called Lucky Numbers, which was supposed to be the successor to Trebek's High Rollers. They actually got him to do the um, the pilot, and they used that they used that particular theme. Unfortunately, Lucky Numbers didn't fly, but they redid High Rollers, but that didn't last very long. Split second. Okay. It should be noted there are two versions of the show, so there are two versions of the theme. The version of the theme they're using for this disc is in fact Tom Kennedy's, not the Monty Hall version. Although it should be noted that Stephen Hados and Monty Hall created both versions of the program. And lastly, but certainly not least on this disc, Rock and Roll Jeopardy. This was the one hosted by Jeff Prost. Now, the cool thing, they did a really uppity version of the theme. For once, that's really cool. Also, whenever they did the celebrity episodes and Mark McGrath appeared on there, he owned it. He, he treated it like it was his bitch. Because he was really good on there. He used to pick a category and be able to run it before anybody else could get, get a word in. Alright, next one is the classic TV game show themes. So here we go, ready? The Wheel of Fortune theme on here is called Changing Keys, and this one was not created by a certain individual. The Jeopardy theme was one used from 1984 to 92, I believe. We got What's My Line. I think it's the second theme on here. Yeah, What's My Line. Well, some of these are going to have this will be the second theme. So, What's My Line is the second theme. Password is the second theme. To tell the truth, I think that was a vocal version. Tic Tac Doe. Now, come on, do I really have to tell you what that show is? Do I really? Here, look, I'll look up Tom, Tom McKee. That'll, that'll cure all your ills. That'll, that'll cure your age for you. <laughs> that, that man ran up a bill for Jack, Mary, and Tanner. <laughs> <laughs> the Joker's Wild. Okay. This is the second theme they used. After... Issues happened with the theme called the Sa the theme called the Savers. They had to create a whole new theme. This was the one used for the Jack Barry version and Bill Cullen when he took over as permanent host. By the way, interesting fact: he wasn't supposed to be the host. That job was supposed to go to Jim Peck. But for some reason, Barry and Earnwright said, uh, no, we're going to put Colin in his house. Jim Peck got screwed at least, twi uh, at least twice in his career. And I mean screwed. Because go look up the second chance pilot. He was the host of that. Which that became pressure luck. Look who hosted that show. Not saying that Peter Tamari wasn't a good host, but come on. Give Peck a chance, for God's sakes. Uh, where am I? Oh, yeah. G College Bowl. Okay, that show aired... When I was a kid. Oh, except I don't know if it was called G College Bowl or just the College Bowl. But I remember seeing a show like that on public television. Here in the U.S. The Wizard of Odds. 
Now, notice I didn't say Oz. I said Oz. O D D S. That one is a one. One of the themes on here that's actually sung. I won't tell you who sings it though. Yeah. The dating game and the Leeway game. Chuck Bears can bite me. <laughs> the twenty-five. $25,000 pyramid. Uh, I've already explained to you that there's like 8,000 different versions of that program. The price is right. This is the Barker and Carey version. Well, sp more specifically, you may associate it with the Barker version. Okay? Match game. Now, here's the theme that's a little bit more familiar to you if you ever watched the 1970s version. Family Feud um, sounds more like Dawson's version than Ray Combs because Ray Combs was a little bit more upbeat. Card Sharks. Okay. Do you remember when I told you there was two themes to some theme songs? Well, there was two themes to this one. Two versions of the theme. The version they use for this disc is Perry's version. Come on, you know us New Jersey boys got together. Yeah, mostly they didn't use the one for Eubanks or Rapid. Don't get me wrong. I like that version, because that, that was the version, the Eubanks Rafferty version was the one I grew up with. Although I much preferred uh, Bill Rafferty's Irish. Jackpot. Okay. Time out. This is the version. The theme. The version of this theme is the one they used from uh, Jack Darrow and uh, Jeff Edwards in the 1980s and 1990s. There was a version of it. Of the theme, it's called. I think they think they called that one their jet set in the 1970s. That version lasted longer than I think the other two incarnations. Go, you know that's the one of the weirder ones I've ever seen put on because it was a show that actually didn't last that long. It only lasted for 13 weeks. By the way, your uh, host for that show, I believe, was Kevin O'Connell. Go look that show up sometime. That was actually an interesting show. The, th the theme will stick with you for a while. Also, this one. Chain Reaction. This is the one that they used for... Bill Cullen, Blake Evans, and... Jeff Edwards. For those who don't know, Colin was the original host. Then Blake Evans took it over when the show moved to Canada. But they figured out that the show wasn't going to fly with him. So they gave the job to Edwards. When Edwards took over the program, I believe it was called the $40,000 chain reaction by that time. Oh, I should re I should go ahead and tell you this, shouldn't I? Okay, where am I here? The Joker's Wild theme, one of the themes, was actually wrote by Alan Thicke. Where am I here? Uh, the Big Wheels theme. The first Wheel of Fortune theme was also wrote by Mr. Thick. He also did... Huh, I didn't know this. He did the Diamond Head game one. And I think he did another one on here, but I can't remember what it is. Nope, okay. He also did... Let's see here. Now they, they they credited the Joker's Wild, the second Joker's Wild one with how high. I don't know if he did that one or 
if that was Alan Thick. Now, you remember when I said that The Wizard of Oz was sung and wrote by the same guy? Yeah, that was Alan Thick too. Alan wrote that theme and sung the lyrics. Let's see where I went. Because I think it did. No, it didn't. But, yeah. So Jason, the guy who plays Jason Seaver, wrote and in some cases sang the theme songs of some of your favorite television quiz shows. Now think about that. Oh yeah, and he also hosted a version of Face, as I mentioned before, he also hosted a version of Face Music up in Canada. And he did the Pictionary show. Forgot that one, too. That just goes to show you one thing, kids. Some of your favorite themes of... Some of your favorite TV uh, shows and their themes have a very interesting story. Sometimes, it pays to research them. Just saying. You all have a good night now. And we'll talk to you later. Good old song.